Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath, Nagabu. Uh, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we ask that you forgive us from our sins, Lord. Please pour your Holy Spirit upon us, Lord. Please uh, be with the audience and please guide me, Lord, as I uh, preach your word. Guide my emphasis, guide my speed. Fill us, Lord, with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our topic that what that they assigned me is about Bible and creation. These are the my favorite topics. I am a graduate. I was born. I grew up in Nagaview. I was born in uh, PUC Baesa, and I sa Nagaview po ako nagkaisip, and th I think I spent 15 or 16 years in Nagaview. And uh, my parents were both uh, teachers, faculty, and staff in Nagaview until I graduated high school and we transferred here. They transferred here in AUT. Yeah, so I am a Nagaviewer po, and I'm very happy to be of service to my school, Nagaview. I would like to thank all my teachers, all the officers of the school there, and also all the students especially the workers thank you very much for, for running nagaview for being instrumental in the uh, molding of many people's lives for introducing the bible and god and salvation to many people who go through the uh, portals of nagaview i am uh, very happy uh, of the educational ministry and I am also in an educational ministry now. I work at AUP and I really value and uh, education ministry is very precious to my because I grew up in Nagaview. Okay, let's go to our uh, topic, the Bible. The reason I really love the Bible is because I was taught the Bible and spirit of prophecy in Nagaview. And I would like especially to thank my favorite Bible teacher, Pastor Benny Perdon. I've been listening to him since I was drawing. Uh, you know, when you're a child in the church, you just draw the whole hour of worship. And I'm just listening until I grow up. I still like to listen. It's very serious and straight uh, sermons. And also, Mom, mga special mention. <laughs> Mom, uh, Ana di malibot kung salgo who hinahabol niyan kami pag naglalaro kami ng sabado at palakad-lakad kami sa nagabi pa ikot. And he, she tells us stories about Ellen White and so on. So from that time on, I really admire Ellen White. And uh, so it really stuck in my mind, uh, this uh, prophet lady. Anyway, let's go to our topic. And uh, because Ellen White says... O yung matatanda daw, huwag masyado matok sa magkwento sa mga sermon, sangkol sa mga buhay nila. What is important is what is in the Bible. Okay, our text is in Isaiah 8.20. It says, To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according. If you look here, I am scrolling my uh, presentation. According to this word, it is because there is no light in them so i i really uh, want to emphasize the word according in tagalog yan, uh, that is ayon ayon yeah ayon i think if you look in the original uh, bible language the word is not there so it means like to the law and to the same, if they speak not this word it is because there's no light in it it's the same idea you have to speak only what is in the bible and what is in the prophets so if it's not in the bible if it's not positively encouraged if it's not uh, promoted in the bible then sabi dyan, there is no light in them or it is darkness for example one very nice example that we are we have to establish why we believe and uh, act like this is the baptism have you ever i tried to read and listen to the whole bible but i have never heard or read a verse that says you shall thou shalt not baptize infants so why don't we baptize infants if it's not prohibited 
the reason is because it is not according diba when we say it's prohibited it's really contrast when we say it has to be according that means it has to be positively promoted diba so we do not just avoid things that are prohibited in the bible we also actually uh, prioritize those that are according and those that are not according according to the bible there is no light so if it is not in the bible you should actually wonder why you are uh, spending time <laughs> trying to push these ideas because their bible says there is no light in them some uh, pastor said the most important verse in the bible is isaiah 820 because all the fundamental beliefs everything that we believe is based on this the accordingness of our belief and i have investigated the 28 fundamental beliefs and found all of them to be according to the bible and those things that we are not interested in they are not according to the bible diba? so for example i say after for example i'm in naga view yeah and uh, i can go out after the sermon i will go to to yabu do you know where yabu is and then my friend will say my classmate will say uh when we'll go after the sermon we'll go to Bicol church <laughs> but that is not according to me right it's opposite yabu is going up there Bicol church is going out so but if my friend says uh i say i'm going to uh to i know to carolina and then my my friend says oh after the sermon win is going to people church is it according to me it's the same direction but it's not still according right because i said i'm going to carolina and he said my classmate said i'm going to be church so it's same direction but it's still not according that's how strict our uh belief should be we have to find positive accordingness from the bible to be sure that there is light if it's not according there is no light so it's very very strict very tight belief there is no black and uh, there is no gray area if it's not in the bible according to this it's there is no light it's black actually it's dark if you want uh, affirmation from the spirit of prophecy you can read in the great controversy page 594 the chapter is titled scriptures a safeguard so if you want everything to be safe it has to be according of course what is in the great controversy the first paragraph is still based on isaiah 8 20. you know what god is so powerful and our topic is about creation god said let there be light and then there was light. let there be waters let there be firmament let there be plants let there be birds let there be fish let there be animals everything was by god's word so the bible is god's word and god's word is so powerful it is life it is cre it creates life whatever god says even if it's not true it becomes true when god says it for example the woman who gave two mites she gave two mites and jesus said that woman gave more than all the other people who gave of course how, what kind of accounting do you think jesus does two mites versus all of the gold and silver that all the rich people gave it doesn't look uh, it doesn't seem reasonable but when jesus says something it becomes true you know what ellen white's explanation is ellen white said that everything everybody who is influenced by that woman's giving of the two mites are credited to that woman so everything that we give millions and millions or hundreds of thousands for all generations after that story happened after they published it everybody read it and i i want to give a church all of those things that we give because we are influenced by the story of that woman is credited to that woman therefore god's word became true diba? that woman gave more than all the other people who gave plenty of money at that time but if you count the influence then the woman actually influenced more people therefore she has more credit 
Okay, our loyalty also should be the most to the most powerful God's, which is God's word. If you want, if you are wondering whether you should be loyal to the government versus God's word, my friend, the government will pass away, but God's word will still be the same. If you are wondering if you should be loyal in case of conflict, God's word versus your parents, God's word can resurrect you when you die if the god's word versus your friends be loyal to god's word god's word versus the uh any organization human organization be loyal to god's word god's word versus money be loyal to god's word god, god's word versus your friends be loyal to god's word god's word versus your teachers be loyal to god's word god's word is the most powerful and we should be loyal to god's word psalm 33 6 says by the word of the lord were the heavens made heavens my friend <laughs> ang laki laki nun grabe when you climb a mountain the mountain is so big but when you look at the stars we are look so small and god's word just made all of the heavens and all of the host of them by the breath of his mouth so god's word is really ah uh, grabe hindi you cannot our, our mind cannot register the powerfulness of God's word actually the most powerful uh, testimony of God's word is when criminals become pastors huh? like Moses who killed somebody becomes somebody who carries the Ten Commandments thou shalt not kill Paul who uh, Saul who killed so many put to death so many Christians wrote the whole almost half of the Bible etc people who were in prison criminals drug addicts drug addicts who were kicked out of the United States, now the most popular Adventist YouTuber who is preaching and so many people everywhere I go, I hear people coming into the church who watch Bible flock box. <clears throat> so that is the power of the word of God, my friends. Yeah. If we die, God's word can resurrect us. Huh? No, the money cannot resurrect us. <laughs> our teachers even cannot resurrect us. Our parents cannot resurrect us. Our friends cannot resurrect us. Our car cannot resurrect us. The buildings cannot resurrect us. Airplanes cannot resurrect us. Robots cannot resurrect us. Whatever, they cannot resurrect us. Only God's word can resurrect us. It resurrected Lazarus. Jesus said, shouted, Lazarus come out. And then the dead man came out. And they unwrapped him. Jesus said, unwrap him and let him go. So God's word gives us freedom from death. And uh, actually, this is just uh, the basic thing. When you have a decision in life, you really have to ask, you really have to ask, what does God want me to do? <clears throat> because God's word is the most powerful. We have to, it's to our advantage that we be loyal to God's word. Okay. Nothing, convenience, politics, money can resurrect us. Only God's word deserves our loyalty. Do you know that there are 33,102 verses or depending on, I tried to count it was 103, but Google, the internet said it's 102. And some versions have less because uh, they copied different kinds of manuscripts and the different kinds of manuscripts some skipped some verses <clears throat> of course there are many duplicates of the verses anyway one sentence you know if we had, there are many ideas okay let's read this one it's in seven volume of testimonies uh page 71 one sentence of scripture is of more value than a thousand of man's ideas or arguments. One sentence of scripture versus one ta uh, ten thousand of uh, your pages of dissertation and thesis. One sentence of Bible is more powerful and more value than ten thousand dissertations and thesis and books and philosophies and ideas and arguments. So. <clears throat> Krabi, this is how powerful the Bible is. One sentence of scripture. Do you know that there are 33,000 verses in the Bible? So, 
if you are thinking what to do there are many things that are advertised according to god's word let us prioritize those i think if it's not in the bible we should not really spend the it's a waste of time i think because uh, if you want your life to be very valuable base it in the bible ayan po but you know in the bible there is a pharisee <laughs> the pharisees believe their uh, church manual and minister's manual more than the bible you know sometimes the religious people they want to write their own yeah they write sometimes they write more they, than they read what is in the bible and sometimes their own opinion becomes more important than what is according to god's word that is the experience of the pharisees before <clears throat> they were teaching for doctrines their own policies in manual and yeah we have to be careful uh to make sure everything that we are actually the bible requires us that to, to be only according to the bible the nice thing about the bible it, it is it unites god's children because if we see people and they behave like what is according to the bible ah they are my friends they are doing god's work so the bible is very nice it unites god's children you think that the bible of course there is a bible verse that says the word separates it separates the wheat from the chaff etc <clears throat> but basically also the bible unites god's children because it is the common uh we, the bible says can two walk together unless they be agreed so when we realize that some people also believe the bible we find common ground however <laughs> evolutionists we are talking about creation they have changed their dates so many times have you ever wondered when i was a kid it was 10 million of years when i grew in high school it became 50 million 100 million how many times did they change their origins their computation and then they found out that uh, carbon dating is unreliable <laughs> so <laughs> you have to recompute all their dates but christians 2021 is okay yeah 2021 since when since when jesus was around approximately <clears throat> Do you also know that there are 250,000 paragraphs in the Ellen G. White writing Sidron? Of course, there are repetitions. Even in the Bible, there are repetitions. And we just understand repetitions as re-emphasis or, uh, yeah, emphasis. If it's said two times, maybe it's more important. <clears throat> 250,000 paragraphs in Ellen G. Whiting's, Ellen G. White writings uh, Sidron. That was my... Uh, the thesis, master's thesis, uh, I made a index to Ellen G. White writings. So what happens? We are there are many thousands of people who claim of denominations who claim to believe the Bible, but because of spirit of prophecy, <clears throat> the Adventist Church is only one. Because we affirm when we read the Bible, we check if the prophet agrees with our understanding. Because we do not contradict prophets that we believe, that we are uh, <clears throat> have confidence in. Of course, we test prophets. So the question is, maybe no, uh, maybe you have this question also in your mind. <clears throat> How do you know that Ellen G. White is legitimate? The answer is, if what she says is according to the Bible, diba? Right? Okay, next question. How do you know? How did the people in Jesus' time know that Jesus was legitimate? A true prophet? The, question, the answer is the same. If what he said is according to the Bible. Diba? It's according to the Bible. In Moses' time, how do you know that Moses is uh, legitimate? If what Moses said was according to what Abraham said. Diba? You look for somebody who you are sure of. And then you compare it with that. <coughs> about Isaiah? How do you know Isaiah is correct? If what Isaiah said was according also to Moses, diba? Because prophets do not contradict the previous ones. Jeremiah, other all the people in the Bible, because when you, when they found the Bible books in the scrolls, in the caves, <clears throat> it's a library. How do you know which book 
will you canonize? Of course, they have to read the books. They know they, there is a basis. They know Abraham. They know Moses. And they know the books. So everybody who agreed with them, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, said, okay, this is coherent with the, the one we are sure. So we include this is coherent. So that's how they choose which books to include in the Bible and which are just uh, jokes. So they, you have something to believe on. How, how about uh, uh, Eve? When somebody told Eve, you will not die, Eve should have counter check, fact checking. Adam said like this, God said like this, but this serpent is saying something else. That's, that's how you should check all information. Check from what you are sure and compare. In our time now, we are checking with the Bible because we are sure about the Bible. Why are we sure about the Bible? Because the Bible prophesied that there will be gold, silver, bronze, etc. And this country is country, country. And the history is following what the Bible says. So we believe because only God can tell the future. And the Bible changed lives. And when we dig under the ground, we see things that are mentioned in the Bible. Archaeology when, uh, answers many Bible uh, questions. So all of those give us confidence in what the Bible says. How do you know Moses is illegitimate? If what he says is according to Abraham, etc. So this is how we check. So how do we know if Sir Win Pasamba is telling the truth? Ah, if, if it's according to the Bible. If it's according to what Ellen Joyet understood in the Bible. Sometimes there is question, how do you interpret the Bible? Because the Bible was written in Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. And different scholars are saying this means like this, this means like this. The language has changed, etc. But for me, I'm not a theologian. <clears throat> it's easier to read Ellen White writings because Ellen White is a native English speaker and writer. <clears throat> of course, words change after several hundreds of years, but not very much. It's still English. It's still English. Okay, let's continue. How do you know that the Bible? Okay, because Daniel 2 came through archaeology and many changed lives. True prophets do not contradict previous ones. Even Jesus himself, he is the Messiah, he is God, but he does not contradict the previous prophets. He says, think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I have not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Matthew 5, 17. So no matter how many PhDs you get, <laughs> even theology, I can even if i am 10 times better than somebody who has phd in theology i cannot contradict the previous prophets because jesus himself said i do not come to destroy the law and the prophets or the prophets i come to fulfill we can only be faithful by fulfilling not by contradicting ellen white or contradicting uh, the moses etc so jesus said there is another verse Ye do err, knowing not the scriptures. So how do we avoid the errors? Sometimes we have not read the Bible and we make decisions and we forget what is in the Bible. That's the source of our errors. So my friends, let us really look into the Bible. When there is a decision, read the Bible from start to end. If you cannot read, listen to it. It only takes 10 days. No. Yeah, 10 days. If you listen 1.5 speed. <clears throat> make it faster so if you were quarantined and it's only mild you should have finished in two weeks yeah of course not everything will sink in but the holy spirit will remind us what we have heard later or diva so in vain do they worship me teaching for doctrines the commandments of god so how do we worship? According to the Bible. How do we serve? How do we do uh, service? According the Bible, to the Bible, to the commandments of God. Teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. We should really differentiate which is, which is human idea and thus saith the Lord. Diba? So is it thus saith the Pharisee or thus saith the Lord? We have to know the difference. This rule, this rule, this rule. Is it in the Bible or is it uh, a policy only, human uh, policy or human law or government law or uh, guidelines? Or... So 
we have to see the quality of uh, reference. The Bible is the most important thing. We have to differentiate ideas where they come from. That's why reference is important. Ah, this one is my favorite verse for students. I have more understanding than all my teachers. For thy testimonies are my meditation. Oh, do you want to be better than your teachers? Understand the Bible. Uh, meditate on the Bible. Meditate on Ellen G. White writings. It will make you smarter than your teachers. According to Psalm 119.99. What if your teacher is also reading? And then better. So you will all become better. Okay. This is my favorite Ellen G. White quote for schools. The Bible is the best book in the world for giving intellectual culture. Wow! So, I wanted to be intelligent when I was college because my classmates were intelligent. I tried this and that and this and that, but it doesn't work. And then I found out this quote. The Bible is the best book for intellectual culture. So I just read Bible, 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 Bible. Wow, I think uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if it works, but uh, at, at least I tried. <laughs> it taxes the minds and strengthens the memory, sharpens the intellect more than the study of all the other subjects that human philosophy embraces. Grabe. And it brings strength and understanding, strength and vigor to the understanding. Oh, very nice. So, according. <clears throat> this is very important. Let's go back to our verse. According, safety. Safety, uh, scriptures as the safety. Why? Why do we, why is a accordingness very important? Because Satan wants to change meanings. You know, in the great controversy, God said this, but Satan, the enemy, says I have a better idea. Let's change it. <clears throat> Why do you want to change something? When you change something, it's because there is an error. You want to improve. But when God creates, it's very good already. If you want to improve, that means you are saying that I have a better idea than God's idea. I have a better creation. I have. So Satan wants to change everything. <clears throat> the Bible defines. This is the problem. When the Bible defines things, Satan wants to change the definition. For example, origin. We came from Adam and Eve. But Satan will say, you came from monkey. <laughs> diba? Sabbath. Bible says Sabbath, seventh day. But Satan will say, oh, it can be Wednesday, it can be Friday or sa Sunday na lang. So it will be priority number one. Oh? No, 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 no. Logic, uh, reasoning, human reasoning, or the enemy's is not important. What is defined in the Bible, we should not change. It should be according the definition, the process, whatever the methodology. If it's in the Bible, we cannot change it without being unsafe. Marriage, Bible says, man marries woman. But sometimes society wants to change woman, woman, man, man. No, 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 no. Changing God's definitions. Baptism, Bible says, you put under the water, you repent and be baptized. Now, infants do not repent, and infants, you just, let's save water, they said. For convenience, yeah, convenience is not a source of theology. Bible is the source of theology. Para makatipid ng tubig, or for health reason, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, baptism is immersion according to the bible changing definitions is very dangerous that's how all the errors are coming into the churches how about salvation salvation bible says this is salvation and then people will invent there is a purgatory ah, 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 ah. how about hell Bible says, this is hell, this is when hell will happen. But now people are starting to say, you are going to hell now. We have to stay with the Bible according to this. How about death? Sleep, death is sleep. But 
Some people say you really don't really die. How about life? Uh, second coming. Second coming happened already. They say, but the Bible says second coming will be there at the last. So revival, there is a false revival, there is a true revival. What is the true revival? You repent. Ordination, elders, deaconesses. Oh, let us be careful. I don't know. Uh some some pastor came to AUP and then he said what kind of elders the bible says a uh, husband of one wife so i read in the bible yeah an elder has to be a husband of one wife so uh i don't know what you think and what is written in other documents but what is written in the bible is i think that is the stable thing for example uh yeah there are many many let us really go back to what is in the bible worship yeah there is uh worship that is uh, very crazy and if you look in the bible what kind of worship do you see reverence right? tithe is 10 percent some people want don't want to pay tithe so they discard what is the meaning Social, do you know about social? According to the prophets, you should research. What is modesty? Oh, diba? Sometimes even the uniform, I don't know. We should really go back to the Bible. And because that is what is stable, that is what is uh, can resurrect us. Our ideas uh, are actually worthless because only the Bible is true. How about laws? Do you know why laws change? Why do you have many laws, new laws? Because they are not perfect <laughs> how about policies yeah we change every year because they are not perfect manuals you change a handbook you change people people need to change because we are not perfect but the bible is stable heaven and earth will pass away but my words will not pass away <laughs> we can change our policies because we do not think about this thing and that thing and this manual and so and the handbook and the minister's manual and uh, that's why they are votes sometimes even the the documents contradict each other but the bible is okay very stable but the nice thing is that ellen white prophesies that god will set everything in order if you see things why is this document contradicting in the gc uh session minutes it says uh, induction in the church manual it says ordination but in the bible it says so so uh there is a prophecy that ellen joy says god will set everything in order don't worry god will set just continue praying and be faithful there is no need to doubt to be fearful that the work will not succeed god is at the head of the work and he will set everything in order if matters need adjusting at the head of the work god will attend to that so leaders who do not want to go back to the bible fully the lord will adjust you <laughs> according to ellen white if you don't want to go back to the bible and to be faithful the lord will adjust the leadership god will attend to that and work to right every wrong let us have faith that God is going to carry the noble ship, the Adventist, faithful Adventist, which bears the people of God safely into port. So don't worry if you see things that you cannot find in the Bible. The Lord will fix everything. We are a church that is being sanctified and the Bible will do. And the word of God is very powerful, more powerful than us, than our unbelief, than our doubts than our understanding the church may appear to us about to fall but it does not fall it remains while the sinners in zion will be sifted out so do not go out of the church because when you go out that means you are the sinners uh, who are sifted out or diva those who do not really want to submit to the bible according to prophecy they are the ones who will leave the church not the faithful people faithful people should stay in the church according to sop it's the sinners who will be sifted out not the safe not the faithful people so let us be faithful <clears throat> it must take place the members of the church militant 
who have proved faithful will become the church triumphant. Faithful to what? Of course, to the Bible, to the law, and to the testimony. According to Evangelism, page 707. So, very nice. There are actually two uh, spirits that contradict every revival. Number one, unbelief. What is unbelief? It's written, but you don't want to believe it. What is fanaticism? The other bad spirit is fanaticism. You are believing what is not written. It's not written and you are trying to push it. <laughs> That's, I think, is fanaticism. Unbelief, it is written, but you do not uh, acknowledge and you do not uh, accept. Fanaticism, it is not written in the Bible, in SOP, but you want to push. There are 233,103-102 verses in the Bible that we can push. There are 250,000 uh, paragraphs in the Spirit of Prophecy that we can push. If it's not there, it's really a waste of time and, uh, yeah, waste of time. Genesis 1 and 2, God said, let there be. Okay, how about monkey? If we are from monkeys, why are there still monkeys? Yeah? If we are still from, if we are from monkeys, why are there still monkeys? Evening and morning, the first day. There was evening and morning, the second day. That means that you cannot think of one day as a 1,000 year. Uh, sabi kasi na iba, others say that, oh, those creation, it was 1,000 years apart because 1,000 years per day. But Bible says, evening and morning, first day, evening and morning. So God really knew that that idea would come and it was clear in Genesis 1 and 2 that every day was a literal day. Why? Because it is the basis of the Sabbath. Archaeology adds more and more proof that Bible is true. The dating system, if you are an atheist and you don't believe in the Bible, your year should be million million of years now. Don't use 2020, right? Because 2021, 2020, 2022 is the approximate year based on the biblical record on Jesus' time. So if you don't believe, if you are a evolutionist, do not use 2021. You should use uh, millions and millions of years. And then somebody, you will not agree even what the date is. So the Bible, the creation is the basis of the weekly Sabbath. That's why the enemy wants to redefine creation, redefine the days, so that we don't have a basis for Exodus 20 verse 8. Because God rested on the seventh day. <clears throat> but we have forgetting something why the fourth commandment says remember the sabbath day god knows that we will forget what are we forgetting number one god prepared food before the sabbath even if he could have effortly said let there be food on the sabbath therefore it is not the effort <laughs> god when the sabbath came the apples were there the mangoes were there everything was there god did not forget to prepare the food even if he could have just done voice command. Number two, the angels effortlessly produced ma effortlessly produced mana, made also made the Sabbath mana on Friday. Even if the angels did not have hard time making mana, they produced the mana on the Friday. So this is what the Lord said. Who says? The Pharisee, Moses, or the Lord. This is what the Lord had said. Tomorrow is the rest of the Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that which you will bake, and sieve that which you will sieve. And that which remaineth, or overlay up for you to be kept until the morning. Exodus 16.23 So, you bake when? Friday. You sieve, sieve is boiling. When? Friday, and you eat on the Saturday, Sabbath, the remainder. In Tagalog, Bahaw. In English, uh, <laughs> ano na ngayon? Stale food. Okay, but you can put in the ref also, of course, and uh, preserve it with salt and heat and coldness and other things, technologies. Because some people read the other verse in Exodus uh, <laughs> which says on this day is the first day it's actually the most confusing the nearest uh, confusing but it's on the first day 
you shall have a holy convocation. In the seventh day, you shall have a holy convocation. On this day, no man should do any work except that is for food. So people thought, ah, you can, pre you can uh, prepare food and cook food on the Sabbath. But that seventh day is the seventh day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And the seventh day of, is, and the first day is on the, if you compute the start of the year in that, uh, in that chapter, you can see that and you research what start of the, what day the Jewish calendar starts. You will be amazed to know that that is not actually the seventh day of the week necessarily always but it is actually just the seventh day of the feast of unleavened bread so it doesn't contradict we just have to search more those who neglect to prepare this for the sabbath on the sixth day and who cook food on the sabbath violate the fourth commandment and are transgressors of god's law wow Bible says, Ellen G. White says also. So it is very clear, even in camping, let us not come to the camp meeting to break. We have forgotten this. Have we forgotten this? The Lord has a solution, and I observe that God is re, re, uh, letting us remember and giving us truth to remember these things. Let us not come to the camp meeting to break the Sabbath. The instructions which God gave to Israel to Israel to should not be disregarded and then they quote also the bake that which will be <clears throat> so we are not here to please our appetites etc so rather, rather than run any risk of breaking the fourth command all neglect all needful preparation for the sabbath should be done on friday all cooking should be avoided as a violation of the sabbath how about I know you buy you buy na lang. those who employed others to perform them were as guilty as if they had done the work themselves how about uh, official statement <clears throat> the buying and preparation of food the reading of clothes and all other necessities of everyday life will be completed before sundown friday and the same document oh those who neglect to prepare violate the fourth commandment same thing the Sabbath is not given to repairing of garments according to amazing facts and the cooking of food. They could quote also. How about uh, from NTUM? Dapat tingnan ng ina ng pagkain ay handa na. According to a document they released in 1969. According to CLC, Bible, ang lahat ng paghurno at pagluluto para sa Sabbath ay dapat gawin sa araw bago ang Sabbath. Q&A portion. Page 71, I think, in the CLC Bible. So the solutions is uh, we are not here to condemn, but that the world might be saved. Oh, diba? So the solution to actually that uh, para hindi mapanis ang pagkain is education. Teach people. <clears throat> education, that's why I really like the educational ministry. It teaches people how to solve problems. When we see what that, that we are different from what the Bible requires, then we research and we educate and we try to learn. And God gives truth to those who are seeking and who want to obey. Other people just eat fruits, nuts, dried fruits. They are commercially packaged and it can last for many, many days. Actually, I have a friend named Tanya Zaitz who is from Ukraine. He, she was so shocked when she reached the Philippines. All the Adventists are cooking. They said, in Ukraine, before we, you get baptized, they t train you not to cook on the Sabbath. And everybody there knows it. Even the cafeteria of Ukrainian Adventist Institute is uh, serving this commercial uh, preserved food. So they don't uh, open on the Sabbath. Also in Heartland College and also in Weimar. So there are examples. If we want to copy, it's easy to copy. How about the vineyard? In Ong Club University, they cook already the viand. They don't even use refrigerator. I asked the president before, he's retired now. They said they use uh, Sabbath menu, the food that doesn't spoil. So don't put, uh, it's usually fried. And of course, sugary food don't spoil also. Salty food doesn't spoil is as easily. But if you put plenty tomatoes or tomatoes, it will spoil. So there are many techniques. 
you can also use refrigeration because heating is a lot okay so why did ellen white says you can reheat actually she said you should reheat the food cook the previous day because if you can cook why do you need to reheat she was saying you can reheat because you cooked it yesterday you can reheat the pre the food cook the previous day so the fact that you can reheat it means that you cooked it yesterday diba? so we have to read the whole paragraph the context yeah theologians you like to read context you read the whole paragraph <clears throat> it says you can reheat the food cook the previous day how about rice actually we should avoid the bacillus serious poisoning and the rice cooker is calibrated usually to be greater than 70 degrees if you, you just put more water uh, every few hours and cover it so that it will not always be greater than 70 degrees celsius so the germs cannot grow or if you want to take the refrigeration route you make it in the you put in the ref less than 10 degrees celsius and then you microwave it later <clears throat> how about in japan in japan they use retort packaging you raise the temperature 121 degrees celsius for a few minutes it cools kills most of the germs it will take uh, several months to eat for it to be to go bad how about the soldiers in the field uh, they use meals ready to eat also the people in space the astronauts they carry all of their food they cook it they package it in mre and retort technology and it lasts six months years and you can still eat it taste still tasty etc so <clears throat> there are many solutions yung gusto maraming paraan yung ayo maraming dahilan it means eternal salvation to keep the sabbath holy unto the lord god saith, let them honor them that honor me i will honor so the sabbath will be the great test of loyalty <clears throat> huh? the sabbath will be the great test of loyalty in the last day events book and the habits of eating and drinking are the most difficult to overcome so when the sabbath and the eating and drinking sabbath is great test eating and drinking is most difficult and if you combine that it becomes sabbath cooking ah very hard yeah but god nothing is impossible those who don't believe ellen white will not believe the bible later according to last day events page 178 to 179 so if you don't like to believe ellen white be careful because when it the bible because if ellen white is not convenient for you to believe what if you find something in the bible that is also not convenient you will also discard it according to 100 uh, last day events 178 to 179 so question how to study the bible huh how to study the bible this is the verse i was telling you that looks like it we can cook on sabbath but actually this is the this is the this is the week of uh, feast of unleavened bread so how do we resolve seeming possible contradictions okay the nice thing is that if there are contradictions that in your mind there are in ellen g white writings it looks contradictory also the same process when resolving contradict seemingly contradictory passages in the bible is the same process with solving seemingly contradictory statements in Ellen White because they are the same source the Holy Spirit number one <clears throat> read everything what is the basis of this uh, reasoning uh, of course it's in first, second Timothy 3 16 all scripture so we have to read everything not just one verse two verses one paragraph this book Genesis to Revelation before you start to think seriously read everything diligent yeah the thoughts of the diligent you have to read everything before concluding of anything diligent do not be hasty oh i love them that love me early shall find me okay read everything why all scripture is useful for these things according to Tim, second timothy 3 16 read everything number two there are people who commit mistakes the writers commit mistakes like all have sinned does that mean it includes all the angels and includes jesus all 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 of course he uh apply common sense when the 
They said all flesh was died uh, died in the I uh, know in the flood. It, of course, the all there doesn't include Noah and his family. So the writers are human and they use human language and they can commit mistakes about references, about numbers, inaccuracies. But the idea is preserved despite the imperfect writers. Figures of speech. There are things that are different to understand. In Matthew 13, the disciples say, Lord, why do you speak in parables? <laughs> yeah, so let us have intellectual humility. It means uh, what we think may, might be wrong. Let us not always think that what we are thinking is always right. There is a possibility that we might be wrong or that we might not understand. Number four, <clears throat> lack of space and time. So there is not, why, why, why uh, does it not mention in the Bible like this, like this? Of course, not everything will fit in the Bible. Only the things that are important for our salvation. Hebrews 11.32 says, time would fail to tell everything so in number five we need to ask spiritual wisdom ask and it shall be given even daniel prayed and the explanation was sent to him daniel 9 23 he did not understand the vision he prayed and the explanation was sent to him you ask for understanding and god will provide and there is the most recent instruction for example uh, Israel said, a uh, God told Israel, you attack, but they did not attack. And then <laughs> the Israelites said, we want to attack. You ask God. God said, don't attack, but we want to attack. They attack and they got beaten up. So it's important to listen to the most recent instruction. If God says you be vegetarian now, you be vegetarian now. Do not read the 1000 years ago where this the fish and the chicken were still clean. Now it's polluted. Diba? Most recent instructions. For example, a jewelry. You read in the Bible, David had crown. Uh, that lady had a ring. And then you read in the Bible, hey, we have crowns in heaven. But what is the most recent instruction in the Bible? Eh? Be modest, not with uh, gold or... Diba? Most recent instruction, how about worship? most things that are gray areas now are actually black and white if you submit to the most recent instruction diba? the most recent instruction do not quote you know even god created everything to be eaten genesis 1 and you go to genesis 2 do not eat of that tree akala ko ba lahat pwede kainin bakit sa next chapter that one tree you cannot eat of so what is the most recent instruction the most recent instruction is you cannot eat of this tree. But the, the previously, God said you eat of all the things that has fruits. Okay. He, the most recent instruction is most is very important. Weigh the benefit. Count the cost. Luke 14. If I believe that there is a God, I can live uh, forever. If I don't believe there is God, no, no more forever. So you count the cost. Luke 14, 28. Count the cost because... Righteousness is always advantageous. Count the cost, quality of reference, yeah, and according who says that, who says, who says. Is it said by thus saith the Lord? Okay, that one will not change. If it's just Moses, maybe, if it's just Paul, maybe, but it's, at least it's in the Bible, yeah? If it's just the Pharisees, uh, if it's just policy, if it's just uh, guidance, okay. But if it's in the Bible, so uh, a reference, you know, quality, how quality? The more you study, the more you understand. I have more understanding. Yeah. Psalm 1999. Study, study, study. Because we not everything can fit in our mind. Distinguish between policy and scripture. Beware of the living of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. It should be according to this word. But the nice thing is that God wants us to know the truth. Don't worry. God will give you the truth when you are looking for it. He has never left. He nevertheless he left not himself without a witness. That's why I mean there are people in the mountain, they don't have a Bible, but they don't steal. They know what is true, what is honesty. The word of God is perfect. Not like the comments and science. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. So that is uh, the nice thing. 
the more references, the better. Because it says in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. We cannot uh, start at this uh, theology with one verse only. And no, no prophecy is of any private interpretation. If you think you're the only one who knows it, you are probably wrong. Because Bible says, no private interpretation. Other prophets are there also who should you should counter check with other people. And look at the official writings. Don't just listen to this opinion and that opinion. I actually look for official writing, voted writing by the church that said you can cook on Sabbath. And I could not find it despite of all the things that we heard. There is no official writing voted writing ssd division on above level even that i cannot find that we can actually cook on sabbath everything is bawal but what we heard is different so let us be more diligent in our search for the truth yan i know uh, uh i there is a lawyer who is an ordained pastor who is an accountant and he has never lost in court he said, when you study something, study all the positive and study all the negative so your opponent, you know what your opponent will throw to you. Diba? Study both sides of the argument. What is the basis of that in the Bible? Numbers 13. Moses sent them to spy out the land. So you should know what your enemy, when you are in debate, you should know everything that they know so that you know what to answer. Proverbs says, the first to speak in court sounds right until the cross-examination begins. So, this is uh, the conclusion of the matter. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. According, everything that we do should be according to the Bible, my friend. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for the Bible, for the spirit of prophecy, for the Holy Spirit who gave this truth to the prophets. For the correcting of God's word, Lord. We humble ourselves, Lord. We have made many mistakes. We don't know how to solve problems. But we totally depend on you, Lord, for wisdom and understanding to obey your word, your will. Thank you for hearing and answering our prayers. Please bless all my brothers and sisters, my kuyas, ates, sirs, moms, pastors in Nagavi, Lord. Continue to lead them, Lord, as they work for you. Give them wisdom and understanding. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.